Hey guys, GSTAR321 here, and today we are playing a game called Cursed Mountain on the PC. Now this is what I'd consider to be an undiscovered gem type of game. What is it? Well, basically in a nutshell, it is a survival horror game, and a very, very good one at that, okay? If you enjoy survival horror, you will really enjoy this game, okay? Trust me. Originally came out in 2009 for the Nintendo Wii, and a year later it was ported to the PC. PC version is superior. What is the game about? Basically, you play a guy called Eric Simmons, who is a professional mountain climber, and your younger brother, Frank Simmons, who is also a professional mountain climber, has gone on an expedition to climb the Himalayas in Tibet. He's gone missing, you haven't heard from him, and as his older brother, you're worried, so you venture out in search for him, okay? So that's the basic premise of the game, that's how it all kicks off. The game got an average score of about 7.5 out of 10, which I think is perfectly fitting for this game, okay? It is not a perfect game, it is not a bad game, it is just a really, really good survival horror game, okay? It has its flaws, and the main flaws that I can think of are controls can be a little bit finicky at times, okay? Overall, not too bad, definitely didn't distract me from enjoying the game. Uh, the other small problem is that Pacing can be a little bit slow at times, okay, can become quite tedious and boring in certain sections. Um, so mainstream gamers, you know, uh, might be put off by this, but if you're a fan of survival horror like me, you know, you're going to push through it, and trust me, it's all worth it. And from midpoint on, all the way up until the end, the game is fantastic, okay, it's good stuff. I have to give props for the graphical location of the game as well, okay. I've never really seen a game sort of set in the Himalayas, you know, in Tibet before, so this was really cool, unique and fresh to me. Some really, really nice set pieces, like you've got cool looking monasteries and temples, dojos, Buddha statues and stuff like that. Very, very cool. And I actually learned a little bit about Buddhist and Tibetan culture just from playing this game, so that was cool as well. So this is it, Cursed Mountain on the PC. Check it out, great survival horror game. Let's do it. So we'll go new game here, and I'll go new climbers log. Here we go. High altitude climbing. My brother, Frank Simmons, is one of the world's best. Three days ago, Frank set off to climb Choma Lunzo with a climbing partner, Paul Ward. He's still up there. Somewhere. Alright, so we kick things off. We're actually playing as Frank Simmons at the moment, okay? Which is your younger brother. And this is sort of just the intro of the game, okay? Explaining how it all starts. So we move forward by using the keys W, A, S, and D, okay? That moves us around. And I really, really enjoy the location of this game. Okay, as you can see, we've got a blizzard storming down on us. Climbing the mountains in the Himalayas. Good stuff. So we'll go straight to the top here. And that is Paul Ward, our expedition partner. And we'll just follow him. Frank and Paul were hired to make the climb by Edward Bennett, the famous expedition organizer. Bennett climbed with Hillary, Bishop, Mesner, and most of the other gods of the mountaineering world. They were supposed to recover an ancient artifact that Bennett knew about. But after they found it, they had some sort of argument. Paul returned to base camp. A storm blew up. And now none of the shepherds will set foot on the mountain they call the Sacred One. So that is the basic premise of the story. And we'll go up here. So we were sent by Bennett to recover an ancient artifact. And something has gone very wrong. And as we continue playing, we will discover what has happened. Bennett 
called me because I was nearby and already acclimatized. So, once again, it's Eric Simmons off to rescue his kid brother. I swear, if I find that stupid bastard alive, I'm gonna kill him. feet. Lando is the highest city in the world. The gateway to the Himalayas. It's a religious city, ruled by the monks of the Chod sect of the Buddhist religion, and home to the intensely superstitious Sherpas, the toughest, most skilled climbing guides in the world. But now, this normally bustling city is deserted, the stores are shuttered, the streets bare. I had to bribe a truck driver to bring me here, and no amount of money could persuade him to actually enter the city. Something has caused the Sherpas to flee their beloved mountain, which will only make it harder for me to find my brother, Frank. Now, here I am, on the edge of a deserted city, desperately needing answers, and without a clue how to find Edward Bennett's house. So, situation normal, I guess. Completely screwed up. So here we go. We need to try and find this guy, Edward Bennett. Okay? Find out what the hell is going on. I love the intro to this game as well, okay? Just before, when you heard uh, Eric talking, he said, I had to bribe a truck driver just to get in here. That's fucked, you know. That the first time I played this, I shit myself. I was like, "What the fuck is wrong with this town?" To make you know the driver think that. So there you go. The engine is running, but the driver has disappeared. So he's fled. And it's pretty cool the way this game plays. It's sort of reminiscent to old school Resident Evil and Silent Hill games. Okay, you'll come across certain uh, areas like this, for example. You can press the space bar to look. Okay, and he'll have a look at it, what's going on, even the birds are dying. Good stuff, okay, it adds to the overall atmosphere of the game. And this is quite reminiscent of the old Silent Hill games, okay, we're in a deserted city at the moment. So sad, the water is dead as everything else. And we need to go in here. And that is an ice pick, so I'm going to go and grab that. Almost. There. Ice axe. The handle of the axe is wrapped with distinctive pieces of colourful cloth. Belongs to Frank Simmons. Okay, so our younger brother. Frank. Ice axe can be used to smash things. Swing it with the left mouse button. Bang, like so. You can only break these vases with it, okay? and they'll drop items and books and so on and that one's just dropped a key actually press I to open the backpack so if we do that you know we've got all these tabs here weapons ice axe which is what we're using now items are just basic things you pick up tape recorder you don't really need to do anything with that okay that's just more in terms of the story of the game Eric Simmons will just talk into it and record and we'll just have you know keys and so on instant sticks give you health so they're like the health packs of the game so to speak books we're gonna find plenty of these and journals are just the objectives of the game the mission alright so we're gonna go straight up here because there's a few vases that I wanna break And it's cool how the camera sort of goes into this fixed mode as well. Like, I can't move my uh, my mouse around and look around me. So very, very reminiscent, you know, of the old Silent Hill Resident Evil games, which is really cool. 
So here we go. Frank's axe has mystical powers, a dead climber's last words. Let's have a look at that. The ghosts came so quickly. Bennett prepared Frank's ice axe with special mantras to help him ascend to the upper reaches of Chomalonzo. He told me to take it to Frank at base camp, but ghosts surrounded me and blocked the way. They flooded the city and forced me to run. The axe helped me make this far, but my luck has run out. Frank must also be doomed. I fear he has angered the goddess, and there is no escaping the wrath of Paladin Lamo. So you now it's all probably sounding a little bit weird at this point, but as you play, everything will become clear. Okay. And something just happened there. I'll just explain. Now, <laughs> all right. So this is a reason why I believe the controls in this game are a little bit fucked up, okay? Sometimes when, like when I just climbed down from that ladder, okay, I was holding up and I wanted to walk towards this door, but he kept, he was walking downwards. So the controls sort of become inverted at times, so to speak, which is really annoying and off-putting, and you sort of just have to move the camera around a little bit and then repress up again, okay? And it should revert back to normal. No big deal, okay? I can deal with it. Definitely doesn't distract from my enjoyment of this game. People store food here, but it's all gone rotten. Why? Go out here. There's a vase. Nothing in it. Hold control and move the mouse to look around. So this is sort of like first person view. You know, you can hold control and free roam, look around, get a bit of view of things. 85% of the time there will be jack shit in these vases, okay, which is pretty annoying. Don't like the look of this. Shit. The screen's going a bit weird now. Can hear chanting. Not good. Vase over here. Vases will usually only drop incense sticks, okay? And let me just check how many I have now. Oh, it doesn't tell me. Alright, but basically you're going to want to stock up on these because later on, midway point and on, there's a lot of action, okay? And you're going to need as much health items as you can, okay? Incense sticks. So here we go, the camera's gone into fixed mode now, which is cool. I like it how it does this, okay? Oh shit. Sh shit. There's a fucking ghost over there. Nothing in the vase. The prayer tower. A beautiful Jordan. But where is everyone? The driver said the city's been cursed. Would that make them all leave? Shit. So here we go. Incense sticks. Incense sticks can be ignited at the shrine of Sang Ye Minla to heal yourself. They are marked with a red glow. So basically, I can't just go into my items here and say, okay, I'll oh, heal. Doesn't work like that. We need to actually go to a shrine, a healing shrine, and use the incense stick at the shrine, and that will give us health back, okay? Crazy shit going on. I saw the ghost over there. I don't know where the fuck he is now. A chopping block with dried blood stains, but that's not unusual for a marketplace like this. Shit. Incense stick. Very good. Pottery and dishes all smashed and broken. So this first mission is quite a very isolating mission okay you're in this deserted town it's really creepy a great opener to the game okay really cool level all the food here has gone bad did decay sit in that quickly or by some height somehow lost track of time incense stick very good the river is dead everything in it too how the fuck can a river be dead? What does that mean? I don't know. Let's 
that'll be a book. Ghost Rumours. A merchant complains that ghosts have ruined his business. Let's have a read of that. Business was great until the ghost rumours started. People said they saw things. Then I saw one. At first it was just a dark spot in the shadows. Not really doing anything. Just waiting. Then more came. And day by day it grew worse. When the attack started, people fled the city. Now I must abandon my goods and leave before it's too late. What a terrible mess. Pottery and dishes, smashed and broken. Another book, Plea to Pal and Lamo, a prayer to the goddess of Chomalonzo begging her to make the shadows go away. O oh, great Pal and Lamo, protector of Buddhism and goddess of Chomalonzo, I beseech you, make the shadows go away, they wander the streets, make them go away, they descend from Chomalonzo carrying the cold chill of death. Make them go away. They fill our valley with sorrow and pain. Make them go away. O oh, great Paladin Lamo, protector of Buddhism and goddess of Chomalonzo, have mercy and hear my cries. The fuck is going on here? Reading all these books is highly recommended, Kate. Definitely adds to the atmosphere and tension of the game. If you don't read it, you know, there's no point in playing it. Hold shift to jog, yep. Don't jog near ghosts. It will alert them. <laughs> Whatever. Thing? I wouldn't even bother listening to that, okay? Ghosts are, If ghosts are, Oh, shit. <laughs> shit. Shit. <laughs> shit. I wasn't, uh, yeah. I wasn't prepared for that. What a horrible stench. What... It's that strange shape on the floor. So yeah, here we go. The red bar is reduced when you hit, as you can see on the left there. That's our health, so we lost a little bit from whatever just happened there. This ghost appeared out of nowhere and just freaked us out. So we've lost a little bit of health. It does regenerate over time, but only up to a certain point. So, you know, we're not going to get any more health than this. If you want to get more, you're going to have to heal at a shrine using the incense stick which we'll come across later on in the mission another fixed camera uh, sorry another fixed camera area pretty cool jump over here fucking nothing the fuck is that noise Probably just the wind. Open. They look like a nice family. I wonder where they are now. Fucking dead, probably. Book here. Cursed Expedition. A Sherpa believes that Bennett's expedition was doomed from the start. We Sherpas were worried about Bennett's expedition from the start. He did not approach the mountain, our goddess, with respect. Everything was too rushed, too forced. The omens turned against us quickly. Ropes broke, supplies vanished. After Frank began his climb, mysterious phantoms began to appear in base camp, and then the ghosts came here to Lando. Bennett has brought doom upon us all. Fucking Bennett. Sounds like a dick. Another one here. Bennett's telegram, diary note written by Frank. Frank's diary. I got a telegram from Edward Bennett saying if I dropped everything and came right away, he would fund me on an expedition up Chomalonzo. You don't say no to a man like Bennett, especially with a mountain that has never been summited. So I came halfway round the world and here I am in Lando. It's more crowded than I remember, filthier too. You couldn't pay me to live here. I don't know how Bennett stands it. Sherpas never let anything go to waste. They must have been really frightened to leave all this behind. Sherpas. Sweet. Another incense stick there. The more the better. Stock up on as many as you can in these early chapters. Ok, 
can't go that way I don't think oh there's a vase Freaking out a little bit at the moment. Nothing's happening, which is concerning. Just got this freaky wind and music and shit in the background. How horrible. They didn't even have time to bury their dead. Fuck, is that a dead body? Can't even tell. Shit, the screen's going fucking weird. Ghosts or something. Nothing here. What the fuck is that? Power box. I don't know what the fuck that says. Probably in Tibetan language or some shit. An old radio, all I hear is static. Another dead body. Oh shit. Small key, okay. Another dead body, literally. What happened here? Fucking flies and shit all over it. The hell? I've always found this part funny, like there's obviously something there and it just appears to be like a silk cloth but it seems to be made out of like iron like you swing it and it makes a metal sound on it <laughs> you know just another little uh, minor inconsistency with the game you know if they spent a few more months just polishing this game up it would have been fantastic you know just a little few graphical glitches and so on but no big deal deal with it all right so here is the health shrine all right as you can see there's incense sticks there that's where we use them to heal we can't do it yet okay but we will be introduced to it very soon as we continue along here through these deserted alleyways and the screen keeps fucking going like that Sad goodbye to Chomolonzo. A girl says goodbye to the valley forever. Let's have a read of that. I'm not sure if I will ever see this beautiful city again. I've always lived here. I can't imagine how it will feel to live in another place. Never more to gaze upon the snow-covered face of Chomolonzo. Will the goddess still watch over me? She was always a kind protector, but now she is raging. Oh yes, I have to leave, and my heart is crying already. The darkness is driving me out of the valley. No one can live here anymore. Anymore. Goodbye, Chomolonzo. Shit. Fucking dead bird there. Flies. The fountain ran dry long ago. Perceive is what forms your reality. You must learn about the third eye, the gateway to higher consciousness. You know, I'm no Buddhist. <laughs> no matter, I'm no Buddhist. Each of us has a third eye, although few use it to see. Try now, try hard. Alright, so as you can see, there's a health shrine there. Right mouse button goes into third eye mode, which is this. As you can see, there's a symbol in front of the shrine, and we press the space button, space bar, to rip the symbol out of the shrine. 
brings us up to this and this is basically just to connect the dot game okay move it from one point to the other till you've completed it uh, feel it you know what to do okay to do now perform the complete ritual to purify the shrine of Sangye Minla the supreme healer once purified it will allow you to heal yourself using incense sticks alright so let's go ahead and do it again purifying ritual okay so there you go um, I don't really want to heal okay but I don't have any choice here okay I can't move so I have to heal press spacebar to heal yourself and that will use up one of your incense sticks I'm now on full health it does not heal you fully okay so if I was on only like say a sliver of health it would not heal me completely okay it'll only heal me say oh, I don't know maybe just over half three quarters so if you're not on full health okay say you've taken a bit of damage from ghosts and so on you're probably going to need to use two possibly even three incense sticks okay to completely heal yourself so that's why I recommend that you do not use any for these first couple of chapters okay At last, Bennett's, house. Bennett's house yeah so save all the incense sticks for much later okay when it gets much more tougher The door won't open. Something feels strange about it. Third eye. Okay. Okay. The door is bound by protective symbols. To open it, you need to find something that will break the symbols. All right. So we need to backtrack at this point. Find something to increase the power of the ice axe. So basically what's coming up now is we're going to have a fight with a ghost and I'm going to explain another little pet peeve I have in regards to controls. Um, here we go, there's a ghost. So press space repeatedly to shake off the ghost. Okay, if they grab you like that, just smash the space bar button and you'll push them off. Okay, now we'll just continue on up here there he is so we have to swing the ice axe with the left mouse button to hit him now I'm just gonna go ahead and do it here as you can see I completely missed on that first swing but you know clearly you saw it went through him okay that is bullshit that is a problem a pet peeve I have okay look sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't it is inconsistent so you know the hit detection in regards to melee combat in this game are see that was bullshit I, I definitely hit him with that swing okay so you know I don't like really taking on these ghosts using melee swings combat with the ice axe okay for that reason you know the poor hit detection so what I like to do is go into third eye and you can actually actually fire projectiles we don't have the ability to do it yet, but as we progress we will, okay, and that is my main form, taking down ghosts, okay. I never uh, engage in melee combat. Sometimes I will, you know, if I'm surrounded by a few of them, but for the most part, I won't. What the fuck's going on? Oh, okay, yep, third eye here. There we go. Space bar. Go through the purifying ritual. Sweet. Shit, ghost. The hell? All right, so okay. I am mounted. Katrika, the ritual flaying knife with the curved and hooked blade symbolizes cutting through obstacles. It combines the flaying implements of a cutting knife and a scraping blade with the piercing quality of a dagger or a pulling hook. So pretty much just an upgrade to the weapon. To be honest, I'm not really sure what it does. I'd say it just increases damage. 
Okay, so Ghost will take, you know, instead of three or four slashes, maybe two or three. Who knows? I don't really take out ghosts using melee combat, so it's not much of a concern for me. Shit, wrong way. Make our way to Bennett's house now. We should have access to it. Okay, here we go. So hold right mouse bumper to u right sorry, right mouse button to use the third eye. And you can move around, look at the ghost, and here we go. We can actually fire a projectile. Uh, it takes a certain time to recharge the spiritual energy, okay? So spiritual energy, whatever you want to call it. Left mouse button, bang. So that's this is how I like taking care of the ghosts, okay? And they tend to do that, teleport, so you just be careful of that shit. There you go. How much easier is that? Thing is gone. You know, always works. You can't kill a ghost. Much better than this wildly swinging, you know, and hoping that the hit detection mechanics don't fuck you up, but don't rely on that shit, okay? Go in here. It's pretty cool. You can walk around and have a look at all these thankers, is what they're called. You know, that's a new word I learn learnt from playing this game. These thankers would fetch a fortune back in London. Not many of not many of the old scroll paintings had survived. So I guess they're just like scroll paintings, Tibetan Tibetan scroll paintings. Don't recognise this goddess. Could be the green Tara. An old thanker. Colour's a bit faded but probably still priceless. Nothing in there. Got a book over here, journal. Bennett reveals prophecy, diary note written by Frank. Let's have a look at Frank's diary. Bennett says there's some prophecy that I'm going to discover a treasure on Chomolonzo, put up there centuries ago by some monks. I've seen his work on the location and I agree there's something up there, but of course, the whole prophecy business is insane. Still, if that's what makes him cough up the money for the climb, then I'll be happy to play his golden boy. Okay, a few more thankers over here, beautiful mandala, ancient scroll painting, probably the oldest thanker I've ever seen. Cool Buddha statue, statue here, beautiful carved Buddha in a meditation pose, he seems calm but somehow he makes me nervous. <laughs> Shit. Alright, so controls are a little bit fucked up at this point, see I'm, I'm holding up but he's running backwards so let's just try and get this shit sorted alright that's better so you just have to let go and repress it okay and it should revert back to normal just a minor problem with the game okay it's not a big deal nothing in those vases just a bunch of junk old and useless Fuck is that? Who puts a who puts a picture of a shrunken head on his wall? Looks like a picture of one of Bennett's relatives. <laughs> what? Looks like a fucking zombie. Is that supposed to be a like a sarcastic joke or something? If so, that's pretty cool. Uh, we can't go through here yet. Yeah, door is sealed by some strange power. So, you know, we go up this way. Supplies for some future expedition. Chomolonzo's hidden treasure. A treasure with unbelievable powers is hidden on Chomolonzo. Let's have a read of that. Secret visions. 
I've studied old scriptures, read hundreds of ancient books, tracked down thousands of obscure hints, talked for hours with Lama Thodpa Bhadra and Kengpo Jingme Lingpa. At last, my long search has borne fruit. There is a term hidden high on the south face of Chomalonzo. The prophecies say it is more powerful than any that has been found before. They say it will give eternal life to the one who knows how to use it. Ah, the possibilities. Okay, so that's what all this uh, fuss about the terma is. The hell, can I have a look at that? Just some magazines, nothing interesting. Hello, Mr. Bennett. There he is. It's an honor to meet you, sir. This is it. Bennett's place. I tried to stop them, but Paul said Frank insisted on going higher, which is Something wrong here. Hard to concentrate on his voice. The object is known as a terma. It's an ancient artifact. Very powerful indeed. He's been missing only three days. He may still be alive. To retrieve something personal, something Frank touched. Thought Pa will help you. Bennett said he can perform a ritual to see if Frank is still alive. I have to find something Frank used and bring it back. Sounds like crap to me, but I don't have much choice. find Frank's ritual bell so we have to find that and supposedly Bennett can perform a ritual which will let us know if our brother's still alive just gonna have a quick look around the area shrunken head hard to believe that thing was once human Sh shit look at that thing I can hit that shit. God damn it. There we go. Alright, let's grab this book now. Bennett visits sorry, Bennett visits jo Jomo Menmo. Bennett visits a Yogini and asks for her help. Hiked up to Cherku village again to talk to Jomo Menmo. She's very powerful, I can feel it. Today went better than the last time. At least she listened to me, but she still refuses to help. As a Chod adept, she must be interested in the treasure, and I know she is descended from other Turtons. Turtons? So perhaps she has plans of her own for its recovery. No matter. If I cannot gain her co cooperation, there are other ways. Interesting. the fuck is that? No idea what that is, but we'll backtrack. And that door, we should be able to go through there now. The one that was previously sealed off. Yeah, okay, yeah, so we've got to do the ritual on it to get through it. No big deal. Such incredible detail. Bookshelf, nothing there. The Death God Yammer, pretty eerie in this light. The candlelight almost makes the painting feel alive. book here. The Sacred One. Ritual Preparations for Climbing Chomalonzo. Let's have a look at that. The mountain called Chomalonzo is sacred to the Sherpas. Some believe it is the dancing place of Paldan Lama, the protector goddess of Buddhism. Others believe the mountain is the goddess herself. It is said that before climbing the mountain, one must complete twelve chorus circumbolations at the, of the base and purify yourself with secret tantric rituals. Only then will the goddess allow her sacred grounds to be entered. Shit. Termas and Turtons. Hidden Termas and the Turtons. Who will find them? 
Termas are Buddhist treasures hidden all over Tibet by the ancient guru Padmasbhava and his disciples. They are pieces of wisdom and spiritual power that will be found when the times are ready for them. Special adepts of the Chod lineage called Tertons are particularly attuned to the prophecies and visions in which their locations are revealed. Okay. I wonder if ter Termas and Tertons actually are a reference to actual Buddhist things in Buddhism and stuff. That'd be pretty cool. Probably is. I am goddess. Okay, so we've got his bell, a small bell belonging to Frank Simmons. Sweet. So we can take it back to uh, Frank, to uh, sorry, to Bennett now. And he should be able to tell us if our brother is alive as a result. And this is pretty much the end of the chapter as well. Once we take it back to him, that is the end of this chapter. Shit. Ghost. Let's take care of him. Teleport. Alright, you'll notice he's got uh, this thing on him. Press spacebar. Okay, complete the compassion ritual. Redraw the symbol. So let's do it. Banishing a ghost with the compassion ritual helps to heal yourself when hurt. Okay, I do this pretty much all the time in the later chapters, okay? It is really, really handy to do if you want to save on incense sticks, okay? You just go ahead and take care of the ghosts using the compassion ritual. That is my definite preferred method for taking care of them. Obviously, if I'm on full health, you know, I might just go just outright shoot him to death like so. But, uh, you know, compassion ritual is really, really cool. So here we go. Oh, shit, ghost. Okay. Let's go ahead and do it again on him. I'm on full health, but who cares? I'm all about compassion here. Ah oh, shit, I didn't pick it up. Either these ghosts are real, and your whole worldview just got knocked into a hat, or there's some kind of high altitude hallucination. So, Bennett tried for the Terma. Lost his leg in an accident and hired Frank to go after the Terma for him. And now he's been scared off by a ghost. So I guess it's time for me to get cracking and find that monastery. Climber's log. 18,000 feet. Approaching the tiny village of Cherku. Someone must still be here. Maybe someone who knows how to get to Todd Pa. Maybe there's news about Frank. Alright guys, so we will leave it there. That is the end of chapter 1. This is the start of chapter 2. Alright, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next part.